Hemodialysis is an extracorporeal process which removes the accumulated uremic toxins, corrects the electrolyte imbalances, and removes fluid from the body. The blood and dialysate are separated from each other by semi-permeable membrane permitting solute and water transfer through the process of diffusion and convection. The integrated system of hemodialysis machine allows the operator to control the blood and dialysate circuits and monitor important variables associated with hemodialysis. The blood circuit consists of blood tubings with its associated ports and sites for various detectors along with the dialyzer. The saline infusion sites along with site for attachment of heparin infusion syringe are also present. The dialysis fluid circuit consists of true electrolyte solutions designated part A and part B along with deionized water from reverse osmosis plant which meets the association of advancement of medical instrumentation criteria. Before switching on the machine, ensure that the machine is connected to the water inlet line. Switch on the machine by pressing the on off switch usually located on the upper left corner of the machine. The front panel of the machine usually has a screen controlling the various functions of the machine. Once the machine is switched on, press the cleaning button located below the on off switch to select the rinse mode. The machine automatically goes into the rinse mode. This process is called the cold rinse. The process usually takes 16 minutes to complete. Once the rinse function is completed, the machine will give an alarm. Put the part A dialysis fluid and part B dialysis fluid on the platform provided on the dialysis machine. The part A consists of sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium and dextrose while the part B usually consists of bicarbonate. Take out the part A concentrate line and put it in the part A solution. Take out the part B concentrate line and put it in the part B solution. Now we press the test button on the hemodialysis machine panel. The machine will run a diagnostic self test and once the test program is complete, the machine shows the test is passed on the display panel and also gives an alarm. Once the self-test is completed, fix the dialyzer in the kidney holder. Attach the blood tubing segment of the arterial line to the roller pump.
नेक्स्ट अटैच द वेनस चेम्बर टू इट्स होल्डर The dialyzer rinse is commenced by attaching IV fluid bottles on the hanger and connecting it to the pre-pump segment by IV sets. The rinse removes all the air in the pre-pump circuit and requires about 100 ml of normal saline. The rest of the circuit is rinsed with normal saline running through the roller pump at a rate of 150 to 300 ml per minute approximately 900 ml of normal saline is required for the procedure at this point it should be noted that the dialyzer is inverted so that the venous end the blue end is on the top and it is gently agitated to remove all the air trapped in the circuit once the procedure is complete the dialyzer is again placed on the holder with the arterial end the red end up the dialyzer port on the dialyzer should be now connected to the dialyzer knob in an counter current fashion attach the venous tubings to the air detector clamp below the venous drip chamber the venous drip chamber is equipped with a solenoid valve to detect air and once air is detected it automatically clamps the venous line and stops the blood pump the post pump pressure monitor is attached by another transducer to the hemodialysis machine these monitors guard against the excessive increase or decrease in the pressure in the dialysis circuit The machine is equipped with alarms set to cut off limits. Fill 10 ml of unfractionated heparin in a syringe and connect it to the respective heparin port. the machine has been primed for hemodialysis and now we shall come to the cannulation of the av fistula 